Alrighty guys. I am still flipping pages in my Bible, but we're gonna get started. Um, welcome to lunchtime devotions. It's Monday. It is lunchtime. Um, I have not eaten lunch, but um, <laughs> my children have, my husband has, he's back at work. So here we go. We are going to um, go ahead and jump in here and knock this thing out. But um, I hope everybody had a great weekend. We did. We had a um, busy weekend. Busy weekends are always the best, right? Like Saturday, we had some um, new friends come over and hang out. We had a little cookout and they went swimming and just kind of the kids got to hang out. Parents got to hang out. It's a win-win. Um, so we did that on Saturday and we had the sign ministry that morning and we had a lot of our friends, some new friends come out to join us too, which is nice because a lot of our, um, regulars, I guess you could say they were working or they had ministry opportunities. You know, uh, our pastor had to perform a graveside service and some other friends were ministering in another church. And so anyway, so it was great for, for us to have, you know, friends that joined us on Saturday at the sign ministry. That was a blessing. And then, um, Sunday morning at the mission, you know, we were able to, um, work with the kids and do our, our usual. We're going through some changes there. So y'all make sure you pray for, um, phase two outreach because we're in the process of changing locations. We're no longer going to be meeting as of, um, the last week of July, first week of August, we'll be moved to the new location. Um, so y'all just pray for them. And then, um, we had a wonderful service at River of Life Church over in Lakeland. We had met actually the pastor and some of the people there. We knew, um, our friends Mark and Julie went there, and then some of our longtime friends, Brother Rick has known my dad since like second grade, but um, they also go there as well. So we were able to um, meet Pastor Lynn at the radio station, the radio interview that we did, a, I think like a month or so ago, and um, we were able to get that booking, and so that was just a time of encouragement. I think, I don't know who was more encouraged, the people or us. They were a blessing to us, and so um, it was just a really... Good service. The spirit moved. It was very sweet. And then um, Sunday night, of course, we were at our home church, um, First Baptist Church of Jesus Christ. So if you guys are in like the central Florida, Polk County area, um, we are over on 3600 Avenue in Northwest, Winter Haven, Florida, <laughs> 33881. Ask me how I know that because I am way too involved in typing up things and putting our address on all these flyers. So I know the location. Um, let's see. At our church. What do we have going on at our church? We kind of go to like a whole bunch of different ones. But at our home church, y'all, we've got Sunday morning service. We got we start out with Sunday school at 945. I always want to say 1045 and my husband gets on to me because that means Sunday school is only 15 minutes. But um, so we start off with Sunday school at our home church at a First Baptist Church of Jesus Christ, 945. And then 11 o'clock is morning service. We do have a Sunday school class and children's church class for the kids. So it's got something for everybody. And then uh, Sunday night church is at 6 p.m. We have Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. And then we have Wednesday night Bible study, normal midweek service um, at 7. So if y'all are, you know, just looking for something to do and you want to come hang out with us fun folks, y'all come on over. But, um, anyway, there's the commercial. So, anyway, <laughs> so back to what I was talking about. Um, uh, we have had a great week. It's been busy. And you guys, I don't know if y'all can tell because I'm one of those people that like, I wear my emotions on my shoulder or at least I feel like it. Some people are like, oh, you're so put together. And I'm like, who are you talking about? Where, who's this put together person you're looking at? Because I haven't washed my hair since Wednesday. So like, there's a reason it's clipped up and I put on cute earrings with my Aldi Aaron running dress. Not because I wanted to be cute or dressed up because I was too lazy to match my clothes. So I put on a dress because I am anything but put together. And um, this past week, I, like I said, some of you guys can tell through my, my Facebook post or whatever. Hey, Kaylin. Hey, mom. Um, you can tell that this weekend or this past week, I was a little... Um, I don't know, moody? Is moody a good word? I was a little, I was just kind of like feeling it. Like all the heaviness and like the changes coming up. And like I had even put a post about how like seasons of changing and some of my friends have moved away and like our homeschool, uh, I'm still praying about like our homeschool activities this next year. Like I joined our group that we're normally a part of, but then we have another person we know who is opening a Bible-based co-op that is really more, um, I was talking to Jeremiah about it over lunch, so you guys can come. Like, you're a part of our family meeting now. Um, <laughs> when we have a meeting in the bedroom, the kids know, like, leave them alone. They're talking about serious stuff. But um, we had a meeting this afternoon, and I was like, babe, like, what do I do? Like, you know, there's so many options. And so we were just praying about it, but, you know, 
I just, it, there's so many changes right now that it's kind of uncomfortable for somebody who doesn't really like change. I like to have a schedule and I like to know what I'm doing and I'm a creature of habit, although my ADHD brain doesn't let me get habits, but I like to do the same thing and kind of know what I'm doing because then I feel more productive because I have a plan. And whenever I don't have a plan, like my schedule, I don't know if you saw it on um, Saturday, I posted on Facebook, my daily schedule. Without that plan, like I will sit on my behind on my couch and just like veg out until I have something that needs to be done. And it's not that there's stuff that like, it's not that there's a lack of stuff that needs to be done. There's a lack of interest from yours truly because the laundry, I'm like, it'll be there. The school, I'm like, we can get to it tomorrow. The floors, they're gonna get dirty again. The dishes, if I wash them, we're just gonna eat on them again. Like, so anyway, I feel more productive whenever I have a schedule. And just all the changes had my brain like, I just didn't even care. Have y'all had that? Please tell me I'm not, raise your hand. Please tell me I'm not the only one who has ever had a, I just don't care anymore moment because I'm so tired of figuring everything out. I'm so tired of feeling defeated. I'm so tired of, well, I can't do this because, you know, my kids won't have any friends. So and so is not going to be there. Well, I can't go do that because I've got this on my schedule or, well, I can't do that. because And, and like, I'm really good about coming to God with, okay, I know you called me to do this, but I can't like, oh my gosh, y'all should have been there Saturday night. We're trying to set up the sound system. And um, it was probably a bigger ordeal to me than anybody else there. But we're trying to set the sound system up at River Life Church. And like, bless my hubby's heart. Like, he did all the heavy lifting, him and David. They got it set up. They got it hooked up. All I had to do was hold a freshly awakened toddler, which they either wake up like so sweet and cuddly or they wake up like a wet gremlin. And he was in the wet gremlin phase. He was just like, ah. And, um. So it was a challenge, but I'm holding him. They got it all set up, plugged up. And so we're trying to sound check at the church. We're trying, had I thought about it, I would have called in backup mom and dad to come help us. But hindsight's 2020. It didn't happen. So I'm like, you know what? We got this. It's fine. We set it up. Jeremiah and Faith are up there singing. I'm trying to run the sound. John Michael's running around like, I don't even know. Like he's on some kind of, I don't know, hyper medicine. He's fully charged because he just woke up from a nap. And I'm trying to think about the words, which I kept forgetting, and the songs we were practicing on. Run the sound system from my phone, walk around, chase my toddler, and I'm just like, Lord, I know you called us into this ministry. I know you opened the door for ministry, but I can't do all of this right now at this same second. Like, I can't do this on my own, okay? I need some backup. And I want to tell you guys something. Whenever I was thinking this in my brain, I did not think, you know what, I'm going to have a um, lunchtime devotions confession session, but that's what it's turned into. So listen, I am far from perfect. And I decided that this is what we're going to talk about this morning because I was getting dressed for jujitsu, which like I said, it involved a hair clip, earrings, brushing my teeth and throwing on a dress so I didn't have to match my clothes. So I put a whole lot of thought into that. And um, I was in my bathroom, throwing my clothes on, brush my teeth, and Graceland, my six-year-old, comes in. And she's like, Mom, I can't, I can't do what, I had given them all chores, okay? Because I've got my schedule, right? We're going to accomplish something today. So we got up, we did breakfast, we did Bible, we did our prayer sticks, our prayer cards. They got dressed. They made their water bottles for jujitsu. Like, we're on a system. It was going great. And I'm like, okay, here's your chores. Get this done. Okay, let me get ready. Just, just like her job was vacuuming the rugs. And she came into my bathroom, y'all, with 15 reasons why she couldn't vacuum the rugs. I'm like, I just want to like brush my teeth, okay? I love you, but I gave you a job. And she's like, well, I can't because I can't plug it in because the cord's tangled. I might untangle the cord. I mean, it's not rocket science. Like, I know you're six, but you can figure this out. Work with me here, girl. So she's like, I can't, I can't do it, mom. And then I'm like, well, did you try untangling it? Yeah, but then, well, Kennedy won't help me. Well, I didn't tell Kennedy it was her job to vacuum the floors. That was your job. And yeah, but brother and sister won't help me. It's not their job. Okay, so what? what's the deal here? Like you were told to vacuum the rugs. That's a perfectly age appropriate chore for a six year old. Go do it. And so she, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I told her, I said, okay, all I've heard is the what you can't do. And I ask her, but what can you do? 
I understand that you're having problems. I understand that there's difficulties arising in your life currently at six years old, not being able to plug in the vacuum and vacuum the rug. I get that you can't do, I've heard all the can'ts, okay? Can't never could do nothing. That's what my mom always told me. But what can you do? And as I said that to my child, putting in my earrings, it was like God just slapped me upside the forehead and said, Kimberly, was that not you this weekend? Was that not you on Saturday night when you were plugging up that sound system and trying to run it from your phone while singing, while forgetting the words, while chasing your toddler? And I honestly felt like God was like, Kimberly, like th you were looking. Everybody's always said that Grayson's my mini me, but it was like in the flesh this morning. It was like, she's saying, hey, Kelly, I hope buddy's doing all right. Um, it was like she was saying the exact same thing that I had told God. Like the exact same thing. And I was like, okay, Lord, that's what we're going to talk about today. I understand the fact that we have hard times in life and God understands that. But I think sometimes, like me with my child, he's like, I've heard all that you can't do. I've heard I can't do this because I can't do it. I can't, can't, can't. But what can you do? And as Christians, a lot of times we get so overwhelmed with the fact that I'm upset. I'm sad. Some of my friends moved away. I'm sad. I don't have a plan. I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. Guess what? You never really do, right? I mean, God holds it all anyway. But I like to think I have it under control, right? So I don't have a schedule. I can't because I don't know. I can't because I have to go grocery shopping. I can't because um, I don't know what I'm going to do with our homeschool group next year. I can't because I have a great graduating senior next year for homeschool. I don't know what this is going to look like, but I'm pretty sure I can't, 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 can't. And God's just sitting back like, but Kim, I get that you say you can't, but what can you do? And immediately I started looking up scriptures. I'm like, okay, God, I know there is like a way for me to battle this brain activity that I'm currently facing right now. And I know for a fact, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Kimberly Lightsey is not the only one on this world who battles this I can't issue. I know there's got it, whether you want to admit it or not, that's, you, don't have to, you don't have to raise your hand. This is Facebook Live. I can't see you. You can see me. I can see myself, but I can't see you. But if you would be honest with yourself, you would say, you know what, Kim, you are not alone because I have the, the case of I can'ts often too. And sometimes we need a confession session to where we just get real in life. We just get real with each other and we say, listen, girl, listen, brother, sister, I do not have this all together. I do not have it figured out. I have not arrived yet. I'm far from heaven, okay? <laughs> I'm not there yet. And until I get there, I'm probably still gonna have I can't sessions. But what we need to remember is what God has given us, his word, right? That is sharper than a two-edged sword. This is our weapon. What we have that we can remember because through God, there's things we can do, even though at times we get discouraged. And so a couple of verses I want to throw at you guys real quick today. I'm going to try not to stay on here too much longer. Um, but we all know Philippians 4.13, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as long as we're trying to do things in his strength, we're going to be successful. But whenever I try to do it in my own strength, and whenever I try to figure it all out, and whenever I try to schedule my life away, and then things get messed up because, guess what? God opens the door for us to minister, or things take a little longer at Aldi than I had in, you know, anticipated. Or, like last week at VBS, the baby, we had planned to go to dinner at Ford's Diner or Cafe or whatever it is in Lakeland. You know where they, like, stamp your Ford burger with the little cute little burn thing, okay? We were going to go there. But then guess what happened? The baby leaked through. He had an accident. So then we had to change him. Well, then I had to go to Burlington to buy him a new outfit because I didn't have a backup in the van. I drive a 15 passenger van, y'all. There's no reason there was no change of clothes in that vehicle other than myself because I thought I was gonna be all cute and clean it out and I took all that stuff out. So I ended up at the store. Well, guess what? By the time we had run the errands, gone to Burlington, bought him shoes because he had no shoes. Got him a change of clothes because he had leaked through. Changed his diaper, got him cleaned up, got the car seat dried up, the towel to base, you know, cover the base, everything. It was too late for us to go to Ford's. So we ended up in the Chick-fil-A drive through for the second time last week. That was not on the schedule. That was not in the budget. That was not in the plans. And it was one of those moments where I was kind of like, ah, you know, I kind of like felt kind of butthurt, like for lack of a better word, like I was kind of, you know, let down because it's not what I wanted to do. But then I take a picture of us and John Michael, the two-year-old's in the back, just grinning like a monkey. He was happy. He loves chicken nuggets and french fries. So it was all good. It was all good. But it wasn't what I had planned. And like sometimes 
we can accomplish things and it may not look like you and I want it to look like, right? Our accomplishments may, may look a little different today than we had woke up with them in our minds looking like, like this is not how I had this planned. It turned out okay. Maybe turning out okay is what God had planned for you. Are you okay with it being just okay? Are you okay with it turning out how God wanted it to look instead of how your schedule had it looking? What can you do? There's a lot of things you say you can't. We can make up a bunch of excuses, but what does God say that we can do? Well, he says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Everybody knows that one. Um, I had to use my little tabbies for this because there's a couple verses, so bear with me as I flip through. <laughs> but in Matthew chapter 19, there's a verse that's very similar in Matthew and in Luke. We're going to look at both. But in Matthew chapter 19, of verse 26, it says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Now, granted, he was talking about um, how difficult it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. You know, the whole camel through the eye of the needle part. Okay. But he's saying, with men it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Not just a rich man getting to heaven, but all things are possible. So whenever you look at your situation and you're like, God, I can't, I can't vacuum because the cord is messed up. Or I can't do this because I don't have time. Or I can't, and we're, like, we're going to make up all of these excuses, right? That's okay. <laughs> hey, Kelly, I'm glad you're back. But we can make up all of these excuses for why we can't. And God in his word is saying, but through me, you can. Through me, you can. And I think so many times, especially as mamas, okay? So if you're a guy, you can tune me out for a second. But especially as mamas, we have these grand, great, wonderful plans that we want to accomplish and how we want our homeschool life to look and how we want our day to run and how we want our finances to be paid and how we want our bank accounts set up and how we want our children to behave and how we want our household chores to just, you know, flow freely and be done without like a whole lot of brain activity. Because let's face it, there's very little brain activity left by the end of my day. Okay. I want things to go as seamlessly as possible, but that may not be what God has ordained for that day. And I can say, God, I can't. And he's like, but what can you do? You can trust on me and rely on the fact that through him at the end of the day, whatever you get done is enough. Now, some of you guys are not purpose driven. Um, feel like you're lacking if you're not productive. Maybe you don't have that gene that is very burden burdensome in your brain. Maybe you don't face the whole, if I don't get something accomplished today, then I feel pointless. Then I feel like I haven't done anything. If I don't have something to show for at the end of my day, then what was the point waking up? I've accomplished nothing. I was blessed, if you want to call it that, with that gene. If I don't have something to show at the end of the day that I've done something, I feel defeated. I feel, I feel like I haven't, I haven't done anything. See? Kelly, God has other plans. And we got to go with that. We got to understand that, listen, I can't do this, but through God, what can I do? What does God want me to focus on? Okay, that's the main gist of today is we can make up excuses. But what does God want you to do? And even though his calling to you, even though his job for today, it's going to either seem really minuscule and small and like unimportant or his calling and job for you today is going to seem this magnificent, huge thing that is like, outside of your reach, right? I feel like God really ever is like, hey, just flow through your life and like take it easy today. <laughs> I mean, he's there in the everyday, but I feel like whenever he tells you something, it's either like, is this really that important? Or like, oh dear Jesus, you're talking to me? You're looking at, you're looking at me? You want me to do what? What? No. And it seems like it's either one of the two like opposites, right? <laughs> whenever the Lord's telling us to do something and we have to face it with the Lord Sometimes we'll say, I can't because, you know, I've got other important things to do. But no matter how minute that item seems, no matter how, how unimportant that, that job may um, compare to the other things in our lives, if it's important to God, it should be important to us. And we can make time for it because it's what God has opened the door for us to do. Whether it's talking to a friend or sending a message of encouragement or reaching out and showing up at a church work day that maybe it's not your home church or maybe whatever. Hey, Rachel! she's here. Um, that's my friend who moved away. I still love her, but I miss her dearly. Um, but anyway, maybe, maybe that little thing that you're saying, I can't, I can't have other stuff. If that's what God has for you to do today, then yes, you can. And if God says, I want you to do this thing that seems so far out of your reach that you can't do it. 
Yes, you can. Why? Because the strength of the Lord lies in you. Why? Because with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And that was from um, Matthew. But if you look at pretty much the same verse, it's recalling the same rich people get into heaven section. Um, in Luke chapter 18, it's found in verse 27, the same pretty much like scripture that's mirrored there. Verse 27 says, and he said that things which are impossible with men are possible with God. The things that are impossible with men are possible with God. So whenever we look at these things like Graceland with the, I can't vacuum because I can't untangle it. I can't because I don't have help. You know, I can't go to this because none of my friends are going. I can't do this because it might hurt somebody's feelings. I can't make this change because it's uncomfortable. I can't, I can't. With men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Okay. You don't have to have the answers. You don't have to understand how it's going to work out. Even though my type A personality wants the answers to everything. And unfortunately, my children were born with the same gene because I get asked, why, mom? Well, why does, why, why, why? And my youngest is only two. So I'm going to have to go through the why phase again. It typically hits like, what, four or five years old? And they outgrow it when they're, what, 20? I don't know. I haven't got there yet. But like, my kids have the why gene. Like, why, why? I feel so sorry for my poor mother. Like, I know I did that to her growing up. And I probably still do and just don't realize it. But they want the answers. They want the answers for everything. And let's face it, I don't have the answers for everything. There is a whole heap lot of stuff that happens that I am not going to have an answer to. I may make up some like justifiable reason. That doesn't mean that it's a fact. It just means that I'm hoping that was somewhat near right. And I felt like I owed that person an answer at that very time. Okay? Look it up. <laughs> if you ask Kimberly Lightsey something and I say something like I am an intelligent being, I may have been having a good brain day, or you may just want to look that up because I completely grabbed that answer out of thin air and just went with it. Okay. I'm not lying intentionally to you, but listen, if it sounds like a logical reason, it probably is right. But in the worst case scenario, it's probably worth the Google. So anyway, verse 27, and he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. I know you say you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, but what can you do? There are so many things that we can do if we would give God control over our lives and stop trying to nitpick every little detail. You know, I can't go out and minister in music because I don't know how to sing harmony, y'all. I know. I've told you. That is like the worst issue that I have as far as like when we get a booking somewhere, especially if it's at like a new church. If it's people who have known us, I feel like they should figure that out by now, right? But I do not have an ear. Like, it sounds really pretty on Sunday mornings. Like, my sister will sing, like, the harmony part behind me. And I'll sing lead. And it sounds really beautiful all together. But I cannot sing that part. I can sing lead. I can sing the melody. You know, the typical notes that, like, you sing along with on the radio. That's what I can sing. I cannot sing these made-up parts and all this. Like, the bass part, David, you know, is like, bop, bop, bop. I can't do that. I, can't, I, I might be able to hear it and, like, give him an example. I can't sing that part. And so whenever I'm looking at these churches that are like, you know, those good, like wholesome, old fashioned Southern gospel churches, y'all know the ones I'm talking about. Whenever we get like a booking for one of those, I get sweaty palms and dry mouth. And because I know they're going to know I can't sing harmony. And my mom's like, oh, y'all sound okay. But then in my head, I'm thinking, but it's not harmony. We're just winging it. Like we're just flying by the seat of our pants. This is not, this is not Southern gospel, old fashioned, like, you know, seeing the shape notes stuff. Kirsten and Tim, they can do that. The Lightsy family, we can't, we just, we just go on with Jesus. Okay. We're different. And God understands that. And he opens up doors anyway, despite my, um, my, uh, illiterate singing abilities. Okay. God still uses us and I'm thankful, but I can stand back and say, Lord, I know you gave us that booking. I know we've prayed for bookings. I know that you're going to open doors. But I can't do that. They're not going to, it's not what they're looking for. We're not, we're different. Like we're special, okay? I mean, we have a kid who dances and, you know, does worship, which is, it touches a whole lot of people, but it's not your normal, like, Southern Gospel group. They don't typically do that, okay? And that's why I think God's called us more like into the street meeting and the outreaches and stuff like that because, those are the people that we can minister to that other people can't, right? Okay, so I can look at it and say, God, I can't do this. But if God's opened the door, yes, I can. Why? Because through God, all things are possible. Because I don't have to rely on my own strength. And let me tell you something. This past weekend, I was ready to quit. 
I know you can't quit ministry. Well, I was about to figure out a way because I just couldn't. I was so frustrated and like annoyed with all of life. It could be hormones. I'm not really sure, but I was just frustrated and perturbed and I had a bad attitude. Ask my husband because he is, he gets the attitude the most. He has the most experience with Kimberly Lightsey's tude. And, um, so I was just like taking it out on him and I'm like, babe, I just don't know. Like there's so many changes and I'm so discouraged and I just don't know what's going to happen. And, and I'm trying to figure out all these things. And you know, like these people are moving, those people moved. And like, I feel like I lost my friends, but like, they're still there and I can still message them, but like, it's not the same. And, and like, you know, our church and like, you know, we have all these activities and you know, we've got these responsibilities and the responsibilities are a lot, but I don't want God to take them away. I'm really thankful for that. We're allowed to serve. And, but at the same time, I feel like I need to be doing this or that, or I have a question in like, it was just like, bleh. I was like vomiting all this like information on him. And let me tell you something, y'all. Your husbands, their brains do not work the same as ours, okay? <laughs> if you ask him, what are you thinking about? And he's like sitting on the couch and just zoning out. His brain literally is thinking about nothing. I don't know that that is like humanly possible for me to think about nothing. My brain is never empty. It's going like at least five different directions at any given moment. Typically it's like 15. It's like this train junction to where all these things are, you know, like crisscrossing and up and down. And we're just trying to avoid a collision at this point. That's what my brain looks like. It's like spaghetti noodles dropped on a plate. Okay. That's what I'm working with. And he's just like, baby, just got to trust God. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Obvious. I love my husband. And I know that's the answer. <laughs> I know you guys are probably like Kim, but I'm going through something hard and I can't. I can't do it. I can't. And I'm telling you, with God, all things are possible. And I'm telling you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you're thinking, I know that. I know that. But that doesn't mean that's what I want to hear right now. Okay? That was me Saturday. I was like, I know, babe. I know that God's got it. I know that I just need to trust God. But right now, I need to just have my moment and freak out a little bit and just vomit on you all this pressure that I've been handling. And his thing was like, but that's not your burden to carry. Really? Like, really? You're going to go there? I know it's not my burden to carry. I know God's got all this. I've turned it over to him. But I'm still kind of having a moment because I feel like I need to be more prepared. And he's kind of like, yeah, but don't you think God can take care of it? So at that point, I just stopped talking to him. <laughs> I just started praying. I'm like, Lord, help me, Jesus. Like, I know he's right. Don't tell him that. I know he's right. But like, I was just, I was just needing a moment. Like, I just, it was, there was so much boiling up inside of me. And as humans, as mamas especially, I feel like we carry so much of the burden that isn't ours to bear. We can't because we're too overwhelmed by all the things that we've taken on that aren't our job. But what can we do? is what God's called us to do. What can we do is trust him that it's going to be okay. What can we do is that when we're giving God all of our can'ts, I can't, I can't because so-and-so, I can't. He says, but what can you do, my brother? What can you do, my sister? What can you do, my child? You can serve God where you're at. You can do what he's called you to do. You can do what he's told you that is important for you to do today. So the last verse I want us to look at is in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. This is where the armor of God section of scripture, you know, put on the whole armor of God. This is where it like the verse before that starts. Okay. So this, this is like the, the what, is, what is it called? A prelude or whatever. Okay. This is like the prelude, the, the forward in the book before we get into the armor of God. And it says Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I thought it was funny because it starts with finally, my brethren, like Kimberly has talked to you for like almost 30 minutes now. Finally, <laughs> we're going to get to this point. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But God looks at you and says, but my child, what can you do? And that's enough. If you're serving God, if you're obeying him, if he's called you to do something, whether it's very small and seems unimportant or whether it's this huge monumental thing that you don't know how you're going to even reach that point, do what God has called you to do with all your might. Finally, my brethren, how do we solve this I can't issue? How do we get this I can't mentality out of our head? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If the Lord lives inside of you, guess what? That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. That same spirit that healed the sick, that same spirit that 
raised the unalive, that same spirit lives inside of you and me. And if it can do all of those things, if it has already handled those things before, then why do we think that our situation, our vacuuming the rug or whatever it may be, why do we think that it is too hard? Why do we think that with the spirit living inside of us that we can say, I can't? Because God wants us to remember, but my child, what can you do? And the answer is all things through Christ who strengthens us. Whatever you're called to do, you can do it. Why? Because you're not doing it alone. Because the spirit lives inside of you says you can. And through, you know, like I said earlier, there is so much peace that comes from knowing I don't have to have it all control. I'm not doing this for my glory. We don't sing a minister because we want you to follow the lightsy family, right? I mean, it, it makes me feel good when I see little hearts and likes on my page or on the lightsy family page. And I try to post on there so you guys know what's coming up for us. But we don't do it for your attention. We do it because we want God to get the glory. And the more we share about what God's doing, and the more you share about what God's doing, and the more we say, hey, we've got these opportunities to minister, and the more you share them with your friends, the further the opportunity gets for us to minister to people we would have no other way to minister to. Lunchtime devotions is an every single Monday thing. And it's been going on almost regularly for, gosh, it started as a Monday morning moment probably eight years ago and so this has been like a like a regular thing here for a very long time right I mean we took some breaks here and there but for the most part it's been pretty faithful for at least the last five years four or five years and so this is one of those things to where if you know lunchtime devotions is coming and you get a word from it and you feel like you know what that really encouraged me but I know so and so is going through something share the video with so and so why not because Kimberly want Kimberly Lightsey wants more people not because I need more followers to meet a goal not because I'm trying to make money off of this thing but because I want to make heaven crowded because I want it all for his glory and if somebody that is already a Christian let's say you're not saved and you need to get saved they need to hear the same message if somebody is a Christian, they're ready to give up because they say, I can't, I can't, I can't. And they need to know that there's hope for them to hold on just a little bit longer. Like help is on the way. Jesus is coming. He's there. He will meet you where you are. If there's that person and you know them, share this video with them. Because I can't, I can only go so far. My reach is only so big. But if you help me and I help you and we all share Jesus and we all promote the gospel and we all encourage and book groups or if we all open up our doors to street ministry, if we all encourage or feed or donate to the homeless missions in our area, the reach of Jesus Christ is going further. The God is getting popular. And heaven is going to be more crowded because we've done our job to reach out to the people who needed it most. Your people are different than my people, but we can reach them all for Jesus. Like I said, our, our goal, you guys know, is Project 700. We want to see at least 700 souls saved before Jesus comes back. At least 700. And we can do that. I may not physically see those lives come to Christ, but if you work with Jesus and I work with Jesus and we're all on the same team, then guess what? The souls that the Lightsy family sees come into the kingdom, you have a part of that. The souls that you see come into the kingdom, the Lightsy family has a part of that. Why? Because we're all in the same army. We're all working together. And even though the devil is going to tell you you can't, God is looking at you, brothers and sisters, and saying, oh, but what can you do? And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So... That's today's lunchtime devotions. I hope that was an encouragement. Feel free to share it with your friends. If you have any questions, holler at me. You guys, remember to pray for our friend Frances and her son. They're going through some situations I don't want to put out there. But um, remember them health and things like that. Remember our friend Buddy who's having some health issues. Remember, um, not going to go into detail. If you have questions, message Kelly. But um, <laughs> remember Kaylin. Remember Rachel with her traveling. Remember, there's so many that we need to pray for. And I have a list. But um I don't know how many of them want to be shared live. So just remember the prayer list. Just remember you guys pray for each other, encourage each other. If you're looking for somewhere to plug in, First Baptist Church, we'd love to have you here in Winter Haven. Um, we've got Tuesday nights. The ladies are going through Gideon. It's been so, so good. I just ordered another book for a young lady who just joined us. Um, so if you want to come, holler at me. I'll try to get you a book by then. The guys are doing this. The Resolution for Men, teaching them how to be the spiritual leaders of their household. So Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock, First Baptist Church of Jesus Christ. We have Bible study. Wednesday night is midweek service. And of course, Sunday is normal church. So if y'all need a place to plug in, come hang out with us. We're a little bit crazy, but like we love Jesus. So it's all good. I'm sure you'll be at home. So we love you guys. I will see you next Monday at 1 o'clock. Until then, be blessed. And remember, what can you do? 
all things through Christ. So take care.